Hey everybody, it's Christina from Hourwood Home. I'm coming to you today from my laundry room. I apologize in advance if the lights flicker, um, the bulb is on its way out. It just came on a little bit brighter, so hopefully it stays on for the rest of this video. I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about making my own laundry detergent. I've got some jars on either side of me. This is the one I've been using the most. I followed a specific recipe, which I will put in the description of this video. I have mixed feelings about this whole process of making my own laundry detergent. Um, firstly, I think it is pretty interesting to be able to make my own. I like knowing that I can control what goes into the detergent so that I don't have to deal with any weird smells or stuff like that because I'm sensitive to fragrance. So I have to use laundry soap that has zero fragrance and zero dyes but that can be kind of hard to find sometimes, and it's expensive. So when I found out I could make my own detergent, I thought I'd give that a try, see how I like it, and if it ends up working well for me, I'm gonna continue doing it and using it. So I found a recipe in a book, and I decided to give that a try. As you'll see, the overall process for making the detergent was pretty straightforward, but also a little bit frustrating for me personally. It was just user error. But I did film all that, so I'll show you that and do a little bit of voiceover to talk about what I'm doing in those clips. I also did an experiment washing two identical pieces of fabric with identical stains. One of them was washed in my regular commercial detergent, and the other was washed using my new homemade detergent. I'll show close-ups of these a little bit later on. Right now I think it'd be too hard to focus those, but I will say Overall, the homemade detergent performs pretty equally to the commercial detergent, which I find really interesting. I didn't really know what to expect, if it would be equal or considerably worse or considerably better. I have to use about the same amount of detergent if I'm using the homemade one versus the store-bought one, which makes sense, and I'm finding it works a little bit better in hot water than in cold water, but using cold water works fine as well. So now let's get into those clips of the detergent making process. This detergent recipe calls for grating a bar of soap. Well, four ounces of soap, however much of a bar that is. For me, it was a full bar and then about um, a third of another bar. Anyways, I decided to wear a glove during that process because I didn't want my hands to get really soapy and sticky and the glove turned out to be a good idea. I used my regular cheese grater and it cleaned fine when I was finished, I just put it in the dishwasher and had no problems. I'm also watching some Netflix while I'm grading because it was a pretty boring and long job. I sped this clip up a fair bit, and I also didn't film the entire soap grading process because it was pretty boring. I think if I did this again, I would maybe try to find some other type of soap. I don't know if there's such a thing as maybe soap pellets or pre-graded soap for this specific purpose, but the soap I'm using is a Canadian brand that is unscented, which is why I chose it, because as I mentioned earlier, I have a sensitivity to fragrance. So that's why I was interested in making my own soap to begin with. Well, my own laundry detergent, I mean. I found it hard to grate all the small chunks of soap that were too small to really hold on to, and that ended up being a problem later on. So I'm not really sure how I could have remedied that, but it is an issue I experienced. So if you choose to make your own detergent this way, I suggest maybe using a smaller grate for the soap. You can see the big chunks in this photo. Once the soap has been grated, you're supposed to put it into a big bucket or container and add hot water. I think boiling water is actually recommended to make sure that it dissolves nicely. So I just filled my kettle, and I have this in my kitchen just so that it's convenient, and I put a towel underneath the bucket so it doesn't damage my floors because it gets pretty hot. Now I'm supposed to be stirring it and then adding some hot water. It doesn't need to be boiling, just hot to make sure everything continues to dissolve. This is an American recipe, so everything is in American quantities. And here in Canada, we don't use gallons, we use liters or cups. So I had to try to convert everything into liters or cups from gallons. And I'm pretty sure I messed up my math because I realized later on that I did not have enough hot water in there. In addition to 
the grated soap. We also use borax, baking soda, and washing soda. I found these things at my local grocery store, but I did have to buy the washing soda online because I just couldn't find it here in Canada. Now we're going to mix it all again, make sure all those powders get really, really well dissolved. I'm wearing a glove here because the borax specifically is caustic and it can damage your skin, so I didn't want to risk that. Plus, it was really hot in this bucket from all the steam, so I thought wearing a glove would just protect my hands further. It did take a fair bit of stirring to make sure everything was nicely mixed and dissolved, but I just used a regular um, silicone or rubber spatula and that worked fine. Everything was really easy to clean after, which I was pretty happy about. I didn't realize the bucket I was using actually had a big crack down the side of it until I stepped a little bit closer to take a picture of the bucket and then I realized my socks were all wet. So if you are using a bucket to make sure it has no cracks, no leaks, anything like that, I ended up switching everything over just to one of my big canning pots. And thankfully the pot didn't have any damage to it. I wasn't really sure since it had the baking soda, washing soda, and uh, borax, but it turned out fine. I, it cleaned up no problems. So this is what everything looks like after it's been mixed. You can see there's some chunks of the soap on the top. I tried really hard to stir everything with the extra hot water to make sure it dissolved. And for some reason, these big chunks just were not dissolving. The soap I was using here, the brownish colored soap, was actually um, a goat milk and oatmeal soap. So I'm not sure if maybe that was a reason it didn't dissolve well, because the vegetable glycerin sort of clear colored bar that I used dissolved quite well with no chunks or residue behind. But this is something I think I'll have to experiment with in the future if I choose to make more homemade laundry detergent. The instructions I followed said that this is supposed to sit, I think, overnight, stirring if possible. So this is what it looked like the next morning. It was really thick. This is apparently normal, but it was kind of gross, kind of concerning. My dog, Bet was very interested as well. I didn't really know how I was going to break this up, since stirring it with my silicone spoon paddle thing didn't seem to be working very well. My husband had the great idea to use some kind of drill attachment, so that's what we did to mix it, and it was a great idea because it really got all those chunks out and made it quite liquid and frothy. Before I started filming this clip, I was actually able to stand up the paddle in the mixture. It was that thick. So next we moved to the bathtub to mix everything just to be safe. I didn't want any splatters in the kitchen. And if it made a mess, it would just get in the bathtub and I could just wash it out anyways. So this worked so well. I don't know what kind of attachment this is. He uses it for mixing drywall mud and that kind of stuff. And it's just attached to, um, I think it's a percussion drill maybe. I'll clarify with him and then put that in the comments just in case anybody else is curious to know what we used for this part. After he finished mixing, I let all the foam and bubbles settle down a bit and then I got my containers for storing the detergent and used a funnel and a big measuring cup just to pour everything into the jars and containers. I thought that would be the most efficient and the least messy. And I just, again, did it in the bathtub so that there was less to clean up after on my floors. Something I noticed with these detergents is that they separate in the jar. So it's very clear at the bottom and then all the foam and bubbles and soap floats to the top. I don't know how well this would work if you were using a dispenser for the detergent, but I just have mine in various containers, which I pour out into a measuring spoon and fill my wash machine that way. I've been just shaking them before I use them just to make sure everything is nicely mixed. I have these on a towel because they were a little bit wet when I put them there and I just haven't moved the towel yet. That bottle on the right is the one that I've been using. It was right full when I started and I've used this much of it. This is just an old oil bottle, which I, well not old, but it's a recycled oil bottle that I washed out with dish soap and water and made sure it was completely clean before filling my detergent. I like using this bottle because it's got a nice cap, so when it separates I can just mix it. 
The other containers I use are just other vessels I had around my house. So I've got um, a canning jar here. I've got another jar with a glass lid. And then at the back I've got, uh, I don't know what that was for, but it was my husband's and he said that I can use it. And it just looks nice. But I think the oil bottle is the most efficient, even if it's the least aesthetically pleasing. Here are two identical pieces of cloth that I used to test which detergent is the most efficient. I just put the cloths on the ground and stomped on them a bit in some mud. They're the exact same fabric, exact same size, same level of starting cleanliness, just to make sure everything is as fair as possible for this experiment. One of the cloths has a small hole in it, so that's the one I will be using to test the efficiency of the homemade detergent. And the other cloth, which does not have a hole, will be used in the commercial detergent that I previously used. Here are those two cloths that I soiled equally and washed with the different detergents. This one is just nice and clean. This one, which is using the homemade detergent, came out a little more dirty. I know it's kind of hard to see because of the window behind me, but it's still got all of these dirt smears. The orange rusty part was on the cloth to begin with, but I noticed this cloth tended to stay balled up like this in the wash when I was using the homemade detergent. So what I had to do was actually take it out of the wash when it was finished the cycle, unroll it, and then I did rinse it again because it still had all the dirt pieces in the folds of the cloth. Whereas this one, which was washed in the commercial detergent, it came out um, not balled up. So I think the issue with this one, which was washed in the homemade detergent, is that I just didn't use enough. I found a lot of different information about the quantity of detergent needed. Some people said just do two tablespoons, others said a quarter cup, half cup. So I did two tablespoons when I washed this with the rest of my clothes and I don't think that was enough. So when I washed other laundry after I used uh, four tablespoons and that seems to be sufficient. Overall I'm really pleased with how this detergent works. I find it cleans just as well as the commercial detergent if I'm using the four tablespoons for each load. It works well in hot and cold water and I haven't noticed any residue on my laundry or the wash machine, which I was a little bit concerned about considering how there's so much froth and foam and almost chunks of soap in the bottles, but it doesn't seem to be a problem. Not only does this detergent clean well, but the laundry comes out feeling really soft and nice and just overall very clean. I've tested this on pretty much every type of laundry item we have in our house, from clothes to towels, and it works well on everything. Not only does it get the dirtiness out of the laundry, it makes it all smell nice too, nice and fresh and clean, even though there are no fragrances in this stuff. If you have ever used a homemade laundry detergent, I'd love to know how it turned out for you, and if your recipe uses any different ingredients or methods than the one that I've tested out. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please feel free to take a look around my channel, watch some other videos, and if you see what you like, I hope that you consider subscribing. Thank you again for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day.